Hey everyone, Teo here. This is the artist review of the Lenovo Tab P12 Pro tablet. So this is the flagship Android tablet that Lenovo has released towards the end of 2021. And this is the upgrade to the 11.5 inch Lenovo P11 Pro. This tablet is also known as the Xiaoxing Pad Pro 12.6 in Asia markets. Just to give you the bottom line up front, this is a beautiful looking tablet with solid build quality and the overall performance is very smooth, lag free and fast. The drawing experience with the Lenovo Precision Pen isn't quite up to my standards though because there are some issues with the pen. So this is definitely the video you will want to watch if you are thinking of buying this tablet to draw with. First thing I want to talk about is pricing. I paid around US $810 to buy the Lenovo P12 Pro from this AliExpress store. At the time of making this review, I found out the tablet is listed on Lenovo US website for US $629 and this comes bundled with the Precision Pen 3. This unit on the Lenovo website comes with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. The tablet that I purchased for $800 plus came with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage with the pen bundled. If I can actually purchase this tablet from Lenovo USA, I would do so because the price savings is quite significant. The Samsung Tab S7 Plus, which is the direct competitor to the Lenovo tablet, is priced at US $699 right now on Amazon.com. So the price difference between these two tablets is not that significant. I may make a separate video to compare these two tablets in greater detail. These are the items included in the box, warranty info, quick start guide. Since my tablet was purchased from China, the text is in Chinese. There is no standard warranty since my tablet was purchased overseas. USB-C to 3.5mm audio adapter. SIM card ejection tool for the micro SD card slot. 1.5 meter long USB-C to USB-C cable, 30 watt USB-C fast charger still in its packaging. Lenovo Precision Pen 3 was released together with the P12 Pro and this pen may or may not be bundled depending on your region. On the packaging box, the Chinese text here says this is the second generation. The naming is confusing to me, so just go with the model number Lenovo BTP131. That's the Lenovo Precision Pen 3. The body of this pen is almost cylindrical except for this flat side here which allows you to attach the pen magnetically to the back of the tablet for charging and pairing. Battery life is rated at 15 hours and you can charge this for 15 minutes to get 25% battery life back. Build quality of the pen is quite solid and I like this matte textured surface. It's very comfortable to hold. There is one side button here which I dislike because I always click on it accidentally. The pen supports tilt and slightly over 4000 levels of pressure sensitivity. There is no movement to the pen nib and this pen nib is replaceable. I don't know if this is using Wacom AES. I cannot find any information online and I don't know if this is compatible with older models of Lenovo tablet. Make sure you don't get the wrong pen. Lenovo Precision Pen 2 comes with a body that is hexagonal, has two side buttons and a USB-C charging port. Lenovo Precision Pen 3 is the one with the cylindrical body design. The Lenovo Tab P12 Pro is a good looking tablet with a 12.6 inch OLED display which is a huge upgrade compared to the OLED display you can find in the previous model, the Lenovo P11 Pro. More specifically in the previous model, that OLED has image retention issues, jelly scrolling, fuzzy hacks due to the Pentel display metrics. All those issues have been resolved with this new tablet. The resolution is still 2560 by 1600. The text and the visuals are sharp. There is no noticeable pixelation. The display is laminated. So there is no gap between the 
pen tip and the line you draw so when drawing it really looks like the line is coming out from beneath the pen tip build quality for this tablet is very solid it looks and feels very premium actually it looks and feels just like the samsung tab s7 plus we have rounded corners for the body the display has rounded corners and at the top right we have the power button and fingerprint sensor those two are the volume buttons the front camera is 8 megapixel wide and can be used for face unlock which works very fast and effectively thickness is 5.6 millimeter and the weight is 565 grams which is a good weight for a tablet this size these are the pogo pin connectors for the official lenovo keyboard case and stand which are sold separately all four sides of the tablet are flat and on this side we have the power button two speakers on the other side we also have two speakers so you get a four-way speakers with fantastic audio quality the audio is loud and clear that's the micro sd card slot there's only the wi-fi model there's no lte on the back we have a two-tone look this is metal the texture is matte it's quite smooth but it's not slippery quite susceptible to fingerprints there's a 13 megapixel wide and 5 megapixel ultra wide camera with flash that little thing there is for snapping the pen to it and the magnets are quite strong but with enough force you can still knock off the pen these are probably the antenna lines the display is hdr capable up to 400 nits so when you're watching hdr videos it really looks like the light is glowing the visual quality is fantastic colors are very vibrant on this oled display and because this is oled you get really good color contrast or contrast levels you can see details in the shadow areas more easily compared to what you can see on an LCD display and the blacks just pure black there is no backlight glow or the IPS glow that you get with LCD displays so the image quality you can get on this display is fantastic the refresh rate is 120 Hertz so animations such as panning around opening apps zooming in and out scrolling web pages um, all those animation uh, can look quite smooth however whether you can get 120 hertz across all the apps will depend on the apps you use so for example with this drawing app when i zoom in and out and rotate i can feel and see the refresh rate still seems like it's 60 hertz overall responsiveness and the performance of this tablet is fantastic it's using snapdragon 870 and it's definitely very capable when it comes to playing graphics intensive games the tablet i bought came with the global room which runs on android 11 and has google play store this is the lenovo ui on top of android 11 and it's a good looking ui it's very easy to get around and there are many useful and helpful features when you swipe down from the top right you get the quick settings at the left side here you have google entertainment space which is just like the google play store which offers movies games uh, ebooks and audiobooks it's essentially google play store but it looks different the only bloatware included is netflix which can be uninstalled time for some line quality test unfortunately there are some issues which i am about to show you so this is the diagonal line test where i try to draw straight diagonal lines slowly and i can see some slight wobble and jitter so this is going to affect accuracy in your drawing this is how the lines taper and they taper quite well the taper is quite gradual quite smooth initial activation force is low however there is this issue where you can see there is a dot at the start of the line whenever i draw with very light 
or minimal pressure. If I press down a bit harder to draw, the line looks alright, but you can still see the wobble because these are still diagonal lines. Let's look at the tapered strokes. The tapered strokes actually look pretty good. The taper is quite smooth and gradual and there are no dots at the start of the line. Yep, so if I draw with minimal pressure, there is the tendency for the dots to appear. Which, when they appear, it's very irritating because you have to undo. You can draw dots easily by tapping on the display and there is pressure sensitivity as well. Let's see if we can draw lines with consistent width and thickness. So these are actually considered vertical lines, so there is less wobble. It seems like I can maintain consistent width by varying the pressure I apply. This is the line variation you can get with tilt sensitivity. So those are the thin lines. When I tilt the pencil, I get the broad strokes. And when the pencil is vertical again, I get the thin lines. The line variation is not that great because the thin and the thick strokes, they are not that different. This is the Samsung Tab S7 Plus. So this is the line variation that I am looking for. When the lines are thin, the lines are really thin, and when the lines are thick, they are noticeably thicker. This is Concepts, one of my favorite drawing apps. This pencil brush should work with tilt, but it doesn't work here for some reason. Another issue I have with this pen is when you draw with the pen held vertically, it looks like the line is coming out from beneath the pen tip. However, if you tilt the pen slightly, notice how the line doesn't come out from the contact point. It seems like the line is offset slightly from the pen tip. To prevent misalignment, you have to hold the pen more vertically like this. If you hold your pen like this, there will be misalignment and you shouldn't have to do that. Even though this display has 120Hz refresh rate, most of the drawing apps actually still run at 60Hz so there will be noticeable latency. However, this is the very typical latency you get with tablets that have 60Hz displays. So this is not surprising to me. By the way, notice the lines here, they are very smooth even though they are diagonal lines. That's because this was drawn a bit faster. There is the fault palm rejection provided by the pen and it works fine. When you're using apps that give you the option to choose pen input for drawing, those apps will have perfect palm rejection. For example, this app is Medibank Paint Pro. I can write with the pen. If I write or draw with my finger, nothing happens. If I place my palm on the display, nothing happens. And you just see that I accidentally undid or undo this stroke here. That's because this app has some issues with detecting your finger gestures and there is this tendency to undo unintentionally and I hate that. Let's talk more about the drawing experience while I draw something really simple, just a boot. This app that I'm using is Clip Studio Paint on Android. Okay, I can see some issues with the diagonal lines again, even though I'm drawing at a faster speed. So you can see the diagonal line, I mean the wobble and the jitter, it affects the drawing. Clip Studio actually has some stabilization applied to the lines to make the lines smoother. However, it's not going to completely remove the jitter. And also with the misalignment that I showed you earlier when you're drawing with the pen held at an angle, 
that misalignment will make things like this happen. So I want to stop the line, these two lines at this edge, but due to the misalignment, I actually overshot. And here as well, you can see it repeated here. So this is not um, something uh, that is easy to get used to. When drawing with this pen, I feel like I have to hold it more vertically so that I can draw more accurately. I don't need to do that with the Samsung S Pen. You can see the lines. Again, the quality of the line is just not that great due to the wobble. And sometimes the wobble can be uh, quite noticeable depending on the app that you use because certain apps, they don't have stabilization. For example, with MidiBand Paint Pro that I showed you earlier, there is no stabilization, so it's going to look, um, the lines are going to look a bit more wavy. Clip Studio is actually not that bad, just that I have to deal with the occasional misalignment. I mean, when I draw, sometimes I like to hold a pen at a low angle, sometimes at a high angle. There is no fixed way for me to... Um, I don't hold the pen in a fixed position, if you know what I mean. Okay, so this is a very sketchy sketch and having the line jitter or wobble is not that big of a deal. If you are drawing something that requires accuracy, such as uh, you're drawing architecture where the lines need to be straight, um, the diagonal jitter is going to be a deal breaker. Basically, the pen won't be able to draw what you want to draw, and that is the deal breaker. Let me turn off the guideline layer and zoom in closer. See the lines here? They are wavy and sometimes they can be quite distracting. So earlier I showed you uh, the dot at the start of the line. Um, when I draw this, I don't see those uh, tiny little dots. Sometimes when you're testing the pen, there will be certain things that will appear during testing, like those little dots, but when you're actually drawing, um, those things won't appear. The display is quite smooth. I mean, the glass surface is quite smooth, even though this pen tape has slight texture. So um, you may want to get a matte screen protector for this, but that's going to affect the image quality for this OLED display. By the way, Clip Studio doesn't have the annoying undo uh, issue that I have with Midibank Paint Pro, so I can actually just rest my palm and draw without um, those unintentional undo. You can use huge textured brushes and the app will still be quite responsive. The Snapdragon 870 is quite a powerful processor, so drawing something as simple as um, this, which is just line drawing with some colors added, um, it's not going to be any, there's not going to be any lag whatsoever. And there is 8 gigs of RAM or 6 gigs, depending on the model you buy. Um, 6 gigs is definitely enough for creating digital art, no problem. This side button here is pre-configured for Lenovo shortcuts which I'm going to show you later on. Um, I've disabled the shortcuts because I always click on this button accidentally. There is no eraser, so you have to choose the eraser from the toolbar here. It's going to take some time to get used to using this pen. It's going to take some time to get used to using any tool for drawing. But as you have seen earlier, this pen has issues with jitter and diagonal wobble and misalignment. Um, 
So I'm not sure if I can recommend this for like professional drawing. I mean for casual drawing, uh, for sketchy uh, sketches like this, no problem. But for more professional work where accuracy is important, then this tablet may not be that suitable for those kind of work. If I draw this same sketch with another tablet, the lines are going to be smoother and the performance uh, is going to be more consistent. Here I get some uh, randomness like the lines overshooting, um, sometimes there is wobble where I don't want the wobble. And now let's try drawing with concepts. So this is the line quality with concepts, the thin and thick lines, the tapered strokes, which are not very tapered, but this is expected with this app. So um, same thing, I want to draw a shoe. Um, I can see the diagonal line jitter or wobble, and it affects the drawing. It makes the drawing look um, look weird. I'm not sure how else I should put it. Uh, hesitant. It makes the sketch look uh, very hesitant as if there is uh, a lack of confidence. Even though I'm actually drawing pretty quickly, but I can still see the wobble with the diagonal lines. There is no dot at the start of the line, so that's the consolation. But I can see the wobble, I can feel the wobble. And you can see all the lines here. It's, um, it's like they are ink blobs. Okay, when I draw the smooth long line, yep, I can see slight variation with the thickness, so it's not that easy when it comes to maintaining consistent width. Oops, accidentally pressed the side button again. So when you're drawing and you accidentally hit this button, which I have already disabled, the line will break. The line will just stop there. But if you did not if you do not disable this button, there is actually a shortcut here, and that shortcut would expand to show you other shortcuts. Um, it's going to interrupt your drawing workflow. That's even more irritating compared to the broken lines. It's certainly nice to draw on 120 hertz uh, where the animation is smoother, but working on 60 hertz is not an issue. The main issue is can the pen draw accurately? If the pen cannot draw accurately, um, if the pen affects accuracy, that is a no-go. Okay, so this is another sketchy sketch. Let me draw the same line on the Samsung tablet so that you have something to compare to. Notice how much smoother this line is compared to what you see here. So that's the pen button I talked about. You can tap on it to call up the shortcuts or you can click the side button here to call up the shortcuts. I will talk about all these features in a separate video when I talk about handwriting and note taking performance. Speaking of handwriting, this pen is quite all right at taking notes. Battery life is quite good. I can get around 10 hours with auto brightness. I should probably mention Lenovo Project Unity as well because it's a marketed feature. It's basically how you can use the tablet as an extended display to your Windows laptop. So you need to install Lenovo Project Unity app on your Windows computer first. And after you connect the two, you can set it to extend your desktop over to the tablet and as you can see the connection is pretty fast. So once the tablet is connected you have the usual display settings. So let me move the tablet to the left side. Few things to note. The colors look different because I did not color calibrate this display and the image quality or the color quality 
for this extended desktop mode is not that great. I'm not sure if you can see on the tablet, but there is very obvious color noise and bending, which is not there on the LCD display of my laptop. It's actually quite responsive as I move the cursor around. However, the refresh rate is just 30 Hertz. You can draw with the drawing apps that you have installed on Windows. There is slightly more latency, but it's not that bad. The image quality drop is definitely noticeable, as well as the 30 Hertz refresh rate. But it's not that bad actually. There is this so-called productivity mode on the Lenovo tablet which lets you create the desktop user interface. So this is the Android user interface and this is the desktop user interface where you get windows that you can move around. I haven't figured out how to minimize the windows when you expand them though. And there are some issues like I am not able to scroll to the left side to see what's there. It supports touch as well if you have a touch screen, external touch screen. By the way, the brightness here is quite dim because this tablet cannot provide enough power to power this external display to 100% brightness. Productivity mode settings is quite limited. You can't even change the resolution of your external display. So if you're using a huge high resolution external display, you will still be using productivity mode in the 1080p workspace. Productivity mode is definitely something that can be improved. I hope Lenovo adds the feature where you can use the tablet as a touchpad to control the cursor on this external display because right now I don't think there is such a feature yet. Here are some glitches I experienced with the global room. When you go into tablet center, this is where you can see the health and usage of your tablet. Under warranty and services, I wasn't able to see the warranty information here. It says there is no internet connection, although there obviously is internet connection. Second issue is when I do a search in the settings page, let's search for brightness. Nothing happens. The search doesn't work. The last thing is when I go into system, system update, looks like there is a new version. I can download and when it tries to install, it would say the installation did not go through. This may be the reason for you not to get the model with the global room from AliExpress. These glitches do not affect the performance of the tablet. However, I can't say whether these glitches will be there on the tablet that's released officially by Lenovo with the official English room. Right, to conclude, this is a well-designed tablet with fantastic build quality. It looks and feels very premium. The performance is really good. It's fast, lag-free, smooth, definitely very capable for doing all sorts of work, media consumption, gaming, and this OLED display is very vibrant, beautiful, and bright and sharp and has no uh, visual issues that I can find other than the risk of OLED burning which all OLED displays will have. This is a tablet I can recommend easily if you are not into drawing. If you are thinking of buying this tablet for drawing, well I wouldn't recommend this when you can buy the Samsung Tab S7 Plus for less than $100 more. You get better pen performance with the Samsung S Pen compared to the Lenovo Precision Pen 3. So for drawing purposes, definitely go with the Samsung tablet. Between these two tablets, I will be selling away the Lenovo tablet after I make a few more videos with it. I'm selling this not because it's a lousy tablet, but because I don't need two tablets that are very similar. Alright, I hope this review is helpful. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions regarding the Lenovo Tab P12 Pro, let me know in the comment section below. See you guys in the next video. Bye!